In the Reaper 6.77 update, they've made changes to vertical zoom, automation items, fades, media item properties, and more. Let's take a look. So first we're gonna look at some things related to zooming and track height. Vertical zoom, overhaul, allow more fractional zoom state. Add preference for maximum vertical zoom. Add new and default actions for mouse wheel zoom that do not snap to theme defined sizes. So if we open up the action list and we search for vertical zoom, vertical zoom is just basically like your track height. There are now a couple different actions for this. So there's this action, zoom vertically, snap to theme defined sizes. And this is going to be the new default action. And themes can define different increments for the track height. And there's also zoom vertically. We can assign this by clicking on add. And then I'm going to use command mouse wheel for this. So depending on the mouse you use and the theme that you're using, you may see a difference between this action, the snap to theme defined sizes action, and the other one, zoom vertically, MIDI CC, relative mouse wheel. And I'll just compare that. For me, they're very, very similar. Uh, this is on the default theme, but user-made themes may be different. And this is something that is probably going to be tweaked a little bit. But I think what's actually more interesting here is in preferences. If we go to editing behavior, we've got this new action for maximum vertical zoom. We can set this to 100%. We could also set this to 35%, for example. And now if I try to change this track height, it will snap to that 35%. And that range is going to be modified by how much vertical space there is. So if I've got my mixer showing, that 35% is smaller than if I have the mixer hidden. But like many things in Reaper, we don't have to be limited to 100%. We can also set this to 200% or even more. We can actually zoom in past the maximum height that we would normally have and you actually have to scroll down to see. Let's do that with a waveform here. So this is kind of like a normal track height, but let's zoom in to 400%. And now, you know, that's zoomed in a lot. So the default is 100%. So a single track cannot take up more than 100% of the arrange view. But if you want, you can go above and you can go below. This is a new preference. Fades, add preference to not create fades longer than X pixels when splitting. So this is related to splitting with the automatic crossfades enabled. We're gonna find these settings under preferences, project, media item defaults. There's this option to overlap and crossfade items when splitting, and this will apply to most of the default split actions. And then there's an option to limit the split created fade and crossfade to 50 pixels. So this one here is the new one. And this overlap and crossfade function is kind of zoom dependent. So we can limit it to pixels, or if it's off, it will use a percentage of the range view. This is supposed to use a 200 millisecond fade. And if we're zoomed out like this and just do a regular um, split, these should be exactly 200 milliseconds. And I can see that here in my time display area, 200 milliseconds. Okay, so now let's turn this option on. We'll limit the split to 50 pixels. And so at this range, this is going to be a 50 pixel um, fade, and this is coming up at, at a 40 millisecond fade. If I zoom in a little bit closer, so again, it's about the same amount of space um, until I zoom in, and this is a seven millisecond fade. And if I zoom in a little bit closer, it's always going to use this sort of a fade this, sh this size, but it's going to change in milliseconds as I zoom in and out. And then when I'm finally zoomed out all the way, it's going to use the full size 200 millisecond fade. So as you zoom in, it's going to do smaller and smaller fades until it can't fade it at all. So using the same action, it's able to put in multiple different fade lengths based on how close you are. So there were situations where this sort of thing was kind of happening in the background. I'm usually splitting with a very small fade length of only five milliseconds. So um, I didn't really encounter that too often. A lot of people were asking for this to be re-implemented and optional. It's a nice feature to be aware of. Solo. 
alt-clicking solo buttons on solo tracks now toggles solo type. All right, so we've got a little drum loop here. All of these drums are going to a reverb. If I want to solo one of these drums, such as the clap, I'm hearing that with the reverb. And that's because we're on the solo in place mode, the default. I can change that going to solo ignore routing. And now I'm hearing just the dry. This track now goes directly to the master, but you don't want to go through that menu every time. So let's look at another way just by alt clicking. So let's solo the kick drum. And now I'll click. So it's still a solo, but it's going to toggle that different option, the solo ignore routing. This is super helpful for hearing a sound without hearing its reverb and other effects. MIDI item properties, improved behavior of enter slash return key, applies and closes if not docked, and use shift modifier to only apply. So what that means is if we're in MIDI item properties by double clicking on any item, we can have this window open. We can make a change, let's say pitch adjust plus two. If I hit enter, that will close this window. If I press shift enter, that will just apply this change and keep the window open. Now we can also dock this window. So you just right click in an empty area, dock item properties window in Docker. And I'll just position that over here on the left. So I can select this item, I can make a change. So let's say three. And if I hit return, that's going to keep that window open previously to this update. You could run into situations where this dock is constantly closing. And even if it's not, just add shift and it will keep the window open and apply your settings. So this is gonna be a lot quicker for working with MIDI item properties. All right, now we're gonna look at a few changes related to automation and automation items. New option, preserve trailing values when recording automation. Add preference to record to existing non-selected automation items. When recording automation creates new items, create smaller items if they intersect existing items and several other small changes. So let's look at automation recording. Set up a track for latch record mode. And if I touch this fader, you can see that that line moves along with it. So I'll just record something real quick. Okay, so there's some automation in there. But what happens if you record something and there's already existing content there? You can see here that even though there's no other recorded automation here, it's going to put in that breakpoint right there and go jump back to the starting value. There's actually a new option for that. We can find that in the main toolbar if we right click, go to envelope points and preserve trailing values when recording automation. So let's try this by turning that off. And now let's record over this again. And as you can see, it was just overwriting essentially with the current position as soon as it gets to the last point. I'll take this out of loop. So that's showing it in latch mode. The other modes are similar. Actually here might be a better example of this where originally there was a point at minus 18 and it's ramped up to minus four here. So with this option, preserve trailing values when recording automation on, which is the default, you can see that that recorded automation has only affected the, the times that I was touching it. And then at the end where I pressed stop, it's going to jump back to the, the original value that was on the envelope lane. Let's actually undo that recording, go back to the settings, preserve trailing values when recording automation, uncheck that, and this is gonna be very different. And you can see there's a flat line from the last touch position up to the next um, breakpoint in the automation.
So for a lot of people, this is a game changer. This has made automation way simplified for them. So that option is in the main toolbar. It's also in your options menu. This is a new default uh, addition to the options menu. And you'll find that here. Preserve trailing values when recording automation. In preferences, editing behavior, automation, we'll find these options for automation items. Always record to automation items. The description here is create new automation items rather than recording directly to the envelopes. And then record to existing non-selected automation items. So that's the new action that's been added here. But first, let's look at what that's like without using that action. All right, so I'm going to jump to a new location. I'm still in latch record mode, and I'll just start recording automation. Now, as you can see there, it put in an automation item where I can drag that around. And I currently have the setting in um, the main toolbar here. Automation items do not attach to the underlying envelope. You can also bypass the envelope. People that use automation items a lot tend to work that way. But there's a lot of options there, and it completely changes the way things work. All right, so I'm going to record automation again into the same area where there's already an automation item. It started overwriting the automation item with a new one. OK, so let's undo that and select the item now. And now when I start automating, I can grab the fader and it, write, it overwrites what's in there. I can change what's within that automation item. As long as I have that item selected, I can even make it longer, just like that. But if it's unselected and I start recording automation, it's going to put in another automation item there. So if you don't like that, there's a new option here. Record to existing non-selected automation items. I'll apply that setting. The item's not selected. I'm going to hit record here. And I can record into an area that already has automation items. No issue there at all. There are other odds and ends related to automation and automation items. That's the basic big stuff that's changed. There's a couple more things here that I want to talk about that probably don't need to be actually demonstrated. They've renamed the notes and drum map action for consistency with menu items. That's in the MIDI editor. You can now resize the render window. When ripple editing or inserting time in a project, it's not going to add in tempo markers redundantly. And for clap plugins, they now support building multi-channel routing actions. I almost skipped doing an update video for this one, but I think those automation item changes are pretty important. The fades thing is weird, but interesting. And personally, I think I'm gonna be using that solo action quite a bit. So that's it. If you missed any of the previous videos in the series, click the link down below for the playlist. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaper.blog for more tutorials.